Welcome back to our new series, how to mix a demo for your bandmates. In this part, we're gonna look at the bass guitar and gonna show you a couple of cool and little tricks. So enjoy and until next time. All right, now coming to the bass, which is a tricky one. Yeah, that's the same for me. When I have to mix bass or do it for the, like for the tracks that I'm doing here on the channel, it's always bass, all right. All right. That's a tricky one. Now we are up, my friend. <laughs> um, a few things. We have a few things to consider or, or challenges. We want it to be heard on every gear, mm -hmm. or rather if it's a phone or yeah, ear pods, a big speaker, or... earpods, laptop speakers, TV, kitchen radio, mm -hmm. everywhere. we don't care. We want to hear <laughs> it. Uh, we don't need to feel it everywhere because little speakers can't produce low end, so that's that. Um, but we want to, to identify it. And we want to have it as one of those meteor foundation instruments. We want it even out and, and present all the time. Mm -hmm. And of course, no harm in a, in a little fun, in a little low end. And um, that's the elements we want to, to hit on, yeah, all right, to cool. tackle. So what we do first, and what I did wrong embarrassingly long, for a long time, um, was that I grabbed um, a uh, compressor, because mm -hmm. one goal is to make it more even, sure. to, to even the, the dynamics out, mm -hmm. and I slammed it. Said, well, it's, it's slammed now, it's evened, but it's in a non-pleasant way. Uh, I said it earlier um, off camera, that when you overcompress things, they tend to get uninteresting. Mm -hmm. Dynamics are important to to make instruments. Uh, yeah, interesting is is uh, yeah exciting. And Maybe you can show it in the waveform here so that people can actually see like the transient and then the decay. Sure thing. So we pull it up a little. What we have here, all those little tiny spikes are the attacks where I uh, hit the bass with my plectrum. Even more so here, the very first one, you see this little spike. And we can... Yeah, yeah, in the quite pronounced here at the end. Yeah, exactly. Those areas are the, uh, the what we call attack, and this is the sustain part, the de decay. And we want to, to even that out and to make every note as loud as the other, relatively. Mm -hmm. We won't overdo it, but that's the goal. Here you see it as well when I uh, did the pre-chorus. Yeah. Those little notes, you want to be, every note should be in the same ballpark and, and evened out, but still maintain a little bit of excitement and push-pull and all that, that goodness that comes with dynamics. So, we actually don't do what I described with slamming it in one compressor and hoping for the best, <laughs> but we, um, we develop a series of problem solvers. So, first mm -hmm. thing, what I like to do is get myself um, a little saturation, maybe with a tube, mm -hmm. every DAW will have like a something or in the ballpark, yeah. yeah. I uh, tend to, do, I really like that one for some reason. <laughs> so we will try to get in the loop back. So you see, when I distort it heavily, oh well. When I distort it heavily, it doesn't seem as distorted. When I solo it, you will be amazed how hard it is actually saturated already. Yeah. But I like it, but I like it. There are things um, or, or methods where you distribute the low end or you split it and you take just the low end of the bass, mm -hmm. keep it clean, take the mid-range and, and upper harmonics and everything and make it distorted. Those 
are good techniques, but for the time's sake, yeah, sure. we will keep it like that. We will distort keep it, it you know, uh, keep it simple. We will just distort it a little bit, a little bit. What we can do now, as distortion will always compress yeah. the signal, um, we can now go ahead and give it a little bit more beef, just above the kick drum. You don't okay. want to to to. Uh, so you don't get any interference between the kick and the and the bass. Right? Exactly, exactly. And then a good part is this gnarly range where the pick actually hits, where you, hits. It doesn't sound as pleasant when you listen to it in solo. As I mentioned mm -hmm. before, um, I'm just doing it in solo to demonstrate uh, and make it clearer what yeah. I'm actually doing. But um, when you listen to it in context... It works, probably. Um, <laughs> so I will solo the uh, drums as well. Yeah, it's just like more in your face right, right it gets, away. Yeah, exactly. So we have the distortion, we have the compression, we have the EQ. Mm -hmm. I still find it a little, a little dynamic. So I would grab a it's slow, a little bouncy. A little bouncy. I would grab a, a, another compression, or the first compression actually. Yeah. And um, there is this one. That's a tube compressor. It gives drive, it gives vibe, um, it's a fairly slow compressor if you set it and um, it's not too grabby. Okay. So, um, we will try that. Set it to slow as possible. I want the the plug of the mm -hmm. of the plaque. I want it all there. Okay, so just for a second. So by saying slow with the attack, you actually mean like to, to get as much transient and as much attack as possible left. Exactly. Left open. So yeah, the, the slower the attack rate is, mm -hmm. the longer it takes the compression to, to actually do stuff. Mm -hmm. So what does a compressor do? It actually turns things down. Yep. That's all it does. Loud parts, it turns down. When you see it as a waveform that is in a block and doesn't have dynamics, and you put a compressor on it, the one part that is not changed at all will be the loud thing that is mm -hmm. our plectrum. It's very short amounts of time still. It's not like bah, <laughs> things. But, it's so audible. but um, the rest will, will be turned down. So. Mm -hmm. We just allow a little bit of, of like aggressiveness. Slap. Yeah, <laughs> a little booty slap. And that is that, actually. I don't want to overdo it. Okay, I would assume that's a rock bass. Sure. Nothing wrong with that. 